Good morning, Modern Standards. We have this beautiful prosciutto that's been sitting in our salt box for a little over a month now. We need to rinse the salt off and then give it a nice little light bath with some white wine and then we're going to put it back in our fridge for a few days. The reason we're putting ours in our fridge is because our root cell is not ready yet. We can't hang it in our basement because our house is heated even the basement with wood and it's too dry. So we're going to get this cleaned up, rinsed off. All right, we have our beautiful prosciutto here. Bring you in and show you. We've been having it sit in our salt box covered in salt. And now it's time to rinse it off and let it dry out naturally. Oh, that looks beautiful. Beautiful. We use the pink Himalayan salt. Now I already washed my sink. Look how nice that looks. You can see how wet the salt is from drawing the moisture out of the prosciutto or the ham, whatever you want to call it. And that is the job of the salt is to pull that moisture out. Did a great job. Now we're gonna rinse it off with water. Wanna get all that salt off. Now I'm going to give it a rinse with white wine for the acid of the wine. That smells pretty darn good. Meat and wine. Mm -mm -mm. I can't wait till this cope is cured. We've got another 11 months to go, but it's gonna be worth the wait. Delicious. The next thing we want to do is we want to weigh the prosciutto. We weighed it before we cured it and it weighed 13 kilograms. Right now, it weighs 11.8 kilograms. So we'll call it 12 kilograms. It lost one kilogram in a month from salting it. Before we eat the prosciutto, we want it to lose 40% of its weight. That way we know the moisture has been out of it. I'm making a tag here for the prosciutto. I put the date we harvested the pig, the weight of the prosciutto before we salted it, how long it was in the refrigerator salted for, and now I'm putting today's date and what it weighed. Now I have my copa. That's been curing in a brine and take it out. I'm gonna rinse it off. You don't have to rinse it off, but I want to. Now I'm also gonna give the copa a rinse with wine. Oh, that looks delicious. It smells good too. So now that it's got a nice rinse with wine, since I rinsed it off, I'm just going to put the seasonings back on top of the copa, which we're using is chili powder and black pepper. This next pot, I'm told, is going to be the fun part. We have a beef bung here that we've had sitting in water for 24 hours that we're going to stuff our copa into. It's capped on one end, so we don't have to worry about tying a knot on it. But we gotta get this piece of meat in here. This is gonna be fun. And we gotta do it without tearing anything. So, here we go.
Now that we have the capicola stuffed into the beef bun, we're going to tie it up. First, we're going to start by tying a knot on the top. All right, cut the extra string off. Yeah, I like that. My first time tying up a copa, I'm happy. We learned from it, we'll do it a little better next time, but the first time, yeah. That's gonna look nice hanging in our root cellar. And I wanna poke the bun, that way the air can breathe. I don't have a fancy poker, so I'm just using a pin. Get some air in there. Nice, I'm happy with that. This right here is another reason why I need to have my meats hanging in a root cellar. The crazy cat would get to them otherwise. All right, let's check on the meats. They're both in the fridge. We have our prosciutto on a rack drying for a few days, and then we have our copa up there also on a rack drying out. The reason they're in the fridge, one is that crazy cat you'll see in a minute, and the other reason is, our house is heated with a nice big wood stove in our basement. With the wood stove, we use natural convection to heat the whole house without electricity. So what that means is it heats the basement up, rises through the stairway right here, and then I have cold air returns all throughout the basement. So the air just naturally flows up, down, through the whole basement, and up and then just keeps continuously cycling. Which is awesome, we live in northern New Hampshire, it can get like 20, 30, 40 below zero Fahrenheit, and if we lose power, I'm always gonna have heat, as long as I don't run out of wood. But the bad part is, for hanging meats, it's hot, which the heat's not terrible, it's more with the wood stove going, we don't have much moisture in the air. So I'm afraid, for our first time while we're learning, to keep the meats just hanging in the basement with that wood stove cranking. So we're gonna build, or I'm gonna build, a root cellar in the corner of the basement. It'll be insulated and we'll get cool air from the outside. I'm gonna get to work on planning the layout for the root cellar. We'll be back later tonight. We're gonna be having pork chops and stewed tomatoes. See you in a little bit. We're gonna make some pork chops and stewed tomatoes. We use Miraglen organic stewed tomatoes. We found these to be pretty good. Every once in a while, I have a great sale on them at our food co-op, and we stock up and load up the pantry on them. And we're using our bone-in chops. Wrong drawer. Man. What a mess. Someone needs to organize that. Man. Tell you what, I never really appreciated an apron until I wore one at the three-day hog harvesting class. And then the following weekends, I wore one when I was butchering the chickens. It is so convenient. It's a nice place to keep your knives, your rags. And I'll tell you what, I'm really enjoying them. I got a new one coming for Christmas. I can't wait. I'm terrible at waiting. When I have something on order at least. It's been shipped, but the mail's been so messed up lately, I don't know when it's coming. And if it comes before Christmas, I might not be able to hold off using it. It's a pretty cool apron. Open up my pork chops. We've been enjoying all of the meat so far. It's been delicious. These are some nice pork chops. We have a little pre-made concoction of some seasonings. I'm gonna put a little bit on. 
one side of the chops. Grab the other can of stewed tomatoes and dump them right on top. Oh, that's going to be so good. And let them cook. That's the easy part. Mm -hmm. Again. Mm -hmm. It's hot, but it's delicious. Very good. Mm. The stewed tomatoes make it have a good taste. Yeah. Oh, you didn't want stewed tomatoes. No, it's Sorry, not on it. It's the inside because it like because the pork chops soaked mm. in all the juice. It's got the flavor of the stewed tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. I like it. I haven't had this in a long time. Yeah. We're basically making Play Doh right now. What are you making? Soft Doh ornaments, but we're basically making Play Doh because this is how you make Play Doh. Because Play Doh tastes pretty salty too, doesn't it? I didn't know you could do this. One of my friends did it. You know, tell me about it, so. We decided we were going to try it. Oh, yeah, it feels it's exactly made. like homemade Play Doh. Mm -hmm. Really squish it. It's just like slime, but it's not slimy. Just like slime, but it's not slimy. It's, it's like doughy it's and salty. Mmm. Looks like fun. It is. It would be Play-Doh if you if you just um made it colored dye. Parchment paper. Should. Okay, smart. Hey, yeah, let me do this side. If you push down, actually, on the rolling pin, it works better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Can we put the cookie shape on it now? No. Get, get them as close to each other as you can. So do more now. Did you do this one? She's doing like Pam did, I think. Yeah, right there, Pam. Yeah. Oh, you're making your hole. Let me get spit it at you. If I find this stuff around the house, I'm mad. No, I no, I yeah, I didn't like the other one. Oh, come on. I'm going to do this too. Can I blow it? Go for it. You don't like the candy? This is cute. It was. Cute. It's just flour. Salt and water. Ew. Don't <laughs> do that. She <laughs> did. <laughs> don't spit them. I don't know. Spit them off. It's going to be stuck all over the floor. You guys think it's fine because you don't have to clean up the mess. No. It's all funny until somebody loses it. <laughs> Here, I need that. I'll use that. Keep on doing that. I did. You get it too close to the oh edge. No. <laughs> Getting all fancy. Having fun. Where's the one that Olivia did that's awesome though? The one that Livy did? did that's all the that's snowman? Awesome. Yeah. Right here. Oh, we should you did a good job with that. Plan. No, that's man. that's mom's. Oh, no, yeah. it's not. It yes, no. that's mom's. Ah, oh, that one's even better. Yeah, it is better. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's where good I job. I just copied hers. That's how I did. Yeah, what? right here. I just copied it right here. Yeah. Except I had four buttons. Oh, I didn't copy very well, did I? Well, that was fun. That was fun, huh? Now we're gonna bake them and we'll decorate them another night. It's nice when people give you ideas of simple things to do. Right. It was pretty simple. Simple, and we had a Stuff at the house, and we just did it an hour after supper. We'll decorate a different night. Have Bed fun. Time now. Bed right. time, yeah. Okay. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Run the Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Bye. Bye.